Hey folks, it's Mike Drudge from Vaught RV joining you today from Middlebury, Indiana, the home of Jayco. You know, I do a lot of walk around videos for you guys and we spend a lot of time on the lot after they hit our dealership, but I haven't had a chance to come here to Middlebury and give you a peek behind the curtain and give you a sense of everything that goes into building these RVs. So join me for the next few minutes while we take a little peek. Okay, I'm inside the J-Flight plant here in Middlebury, Indiana. I'm really excited to spend a few minutes with you to kind of give you a peek behind the curtain, if you will. You know, you come out on the lot, you see a lot of these units sitting on our lot, and I often tell people to try to look at things uh, with x-ray vision if you can. It's difficult to do, but here we sit inside the plant where we can look at the units as they're being built show you some things that you can't see on the lot, show you some things that we talk about a lot of times and it's kind of hard to describe. If you've navigated your way this far to this video, you're probably interested in how these things are built. And uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a little geeky that way. I find this stuff really fascinating and interesting. But at the end of the day, there's a lot that goes into a Jayco that you won't see in other manufacturers. It's hard to point out again on the lot, a little easier to do while we're sitting in here. So I'm gonna walk around a little bit and give you a little sense of, of what you're seeing. We're, we're in this plant. You can see up above me, there's a furniture mezzanine, what I'm gonna show you in just a little bit. Jayco is one of few, very few manufacturers that actually builds their furniture up on a mezzanine level which makes it much easier and more efficient and safer, I might add, to build those components and then drop them down where the units are. A lot of reasons to do that, and I'll give you an aerial shot here in a little bit. But let's start out with talking about the frame, and then we'll work our way up a little bit. Just like a home, uh, a strong home starts with a strong foundation. Jayco is famous for their strength of build, both in the foundation as well as the roof. Build a strong foundation, build a strong roof structure, you have a strong house. And after all, think about it, these units are subjected to hurricane force winds and earthquake level vibrations going down the road. So yeah, let's start out. I wanna show you the frame and then we'll move on from there. So what we're looking at here is a J-Flight frame. Now, a couple things to point out again that you can't see sitting on our lot, and we talk about this, is the integrated A-frame. Most manufacturers are gonna take this A-frame up here and they're gonna weld the frame to the top of it. Notice how this is integrated. It goes through this front cross member. It continues on. It's welded in multiple points. And if you paid attention in geometry class, you know that a strong A-frame makes for a strong, rigid structure. You don't see that sitting on the lot. Something else you don't see is how many cross members are in the frame. A lot of manufacturers will skimp under here. Jayco doesn't. Another thing to point out is look at all these outriggers. Now, what do those do? Those are going to make for a much stronger foundation again so that you have a rigid floor structure. It's just a stronger structure altogether. What happens when you do that? This thing weighs a little bit more than the competition. It's going to cost a few more bucks and you don't see that. So when you're on the lot, you're not seeing any of this but you're the beneficiary of it because again, if this is a strong structure, that means the RV itself is gonna last longer. Moving along, we're coming over here to where we can see uh, the plywood being applied to this unit. Plywood floor, now notice it's 5 8 tongue and groove plywood. It's not OSB, it's not particle board. I wanna point out something else. These are all screwed down to the frame members. After the, uh, after the plywood is screwed down, they come along here, make sure everything's sanded off so there's nothing poking through what will eventually be your linoleum floor. It's tongue and groove, so essentially it's, a, it's uh, I won't say it's seamless, it's seamless in the fact that it's tongue and groove from front to back, and again, it's 5 8 tongue and groove plywood really makes for a strong structure. Moving down to the next step, you can see we've flipped this whole 
frame structure over on its belly so the guys have more access underneath to uh, do some different functions. I want to point out that look at these multiple lag points down here. This makes even a more rigid structure and strong. They're lagging from the underside, not from the top, so you can see multiple points where this thing is lagged on these cross members, uh, again, from the bottom. As we move down the line, you can see that the fresh water tank has been installed here. And I want to point out, this gives me a great uh, opportunity to point out these three really thick metal cross members that go on here. Most manufacturers are going to put little thin strips of metal across the bottom of that tank to secure it. These things are really thick so that there's no chance that thing's going to come loose from under there. At this point, we're also running uh, various plumbing elements, the wiring harness is laying in place. And here's another thing to point out that you won't see. You can reach up and feel it on the lot, but you won't see it. Look at this galvanized metal. Uh, this is going to be the wheel well area of the unit. In the unlikely event that you kick up a tire tread on the interstate or you have a blowout, a tire issue of some sort, you're not going to tear up the side of the, your unit. This is going to add a lot of protection on the underside of that wheel well. I always tell people to do the knuckle test, so when you're going around and shopping around, and you should, just reach up, give that a little wrap with the knuckles and see what you feel. Sometimes it's going to be plastic, sometimes it'll be nothing actually, but on every Jayco you're going to get, have galvanized metal on the underside of that wheel well. Uh, again, something that you wouldn't normally see. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel at home here. I grew up just a few miles from here. Uh, you could say that Middlebury's a one-horse town, but honestly, there's a lot of horses in Middlebury, Indiana. And a lot of those horses are pulling buggies, and a lot of those buggies are going to Jayco. About a third of Jayco's workforce is made up of Amish folks. And uh, quite honestly, they're great neighbors, good folks and uh, it's a big part of the culture here in northern Indiana. Moving along to the next phase, we've flipped the uh, frame over and you can see now that we've installed the linoleum flooring. One piece sheet linoleum flooring has been pulled over the whole floor structure and now we're starting to put some components on the inside. Um, you know, a lot of times you think, well, you build the frame like you would a house, get it framed in, put the roof on, and then you move the furniture in. In this case, kind of build them from the inside out and it's a lot more efficient for Jayco to do that. So we're starting to put components in um, and around, like, like check this out. So now we're already building the bathroom structure. The island in the middle of the unit is already installed. And I'm gonna back up here and give you guys a little shot of the mezzanine for the furniture. All that furniture is built up there and then slid down right where it needs to be. <clears throat> So you can see each component waiting to be dropped down onto this unit. You can see the sink structure there. You see our faucet, our kitchen, kitchen uh, assembly right there. Everything's ready to be dropped down onto this frame from the mezzanine level. That saves a lot of uh, back pain. It's a lot more efficient. And it's also safer. These things aren't floating around on the floor down here getting dinged while they're waiting to be installed. They can be slid down. Really an efficient way to do it. I don't know of another manufacturer that does this. Uh, if there are, I can say that Jayco's really perfected it. And we'll hop upstairs and kind of give you guys an aerial view of this as well. All right, and up we go to the mezzanine. Now here's where the larger furniture components are being uh, assembled and constructed. You can see all these island kitchen assemblies up here ready to go. Jayco builds this cabinetry in-house so they can quality control it. All these workstations around here. Obviously nobody's up here working. I had to wait until they're not running production to come up here and have access to this uh, area. Of course, they don't want uh, some guy running around with a camera up here while they're building these things. But appreciate Jayco giving us an opportunity to have a peek up here. Again, these are all the larger furniture components being put together and ready for 
placement on the units themselves. So if I walk back here, uh, again, I'll give you a little bird's eye view. We're coming up on the true mezzanine level where the units, uh, individual components are slid down right where I was standing just a little bit ago. So you can see that each individual component in order is slid down there. Of course, there's a worker up here with an har a harness. Each one of these is slid down and placed on the frame um, and the chassis as it goes through production. So you can see they're starting to take shape down there before they even put the sidewalls and the roof structure on. Much more efficient, cleaner, and safer. One thing that amazed me going through the tour here is how many jigs there are in this place. Jigs for everything so they can do things in repetition and do it right and do it the same every time. This gives us an opportunity to look at the sidewall being put together here. And here's something key to the way Jayco does this. You see this piece of uh, lumber, it looks like a two by eight along here. Looks like something you would get Home Depot or Lowe's, but it's not. It's called LVL, laminated veneer lumber. This is enormously stronger than what uh, a two by eight or two by 10 even would be. There's a lot of reasons for that. It's an engineered piece of wood. Um, and let me show you where it goes. It's gonna go on top of the slide room assembly. So here's, here's a wall unit sitting here. You can see how long this goes. Imagine if you tried to find a straight and true piece of traditional lumber. Good luck doing that. This is an expensive component that goes in here. But again, check this out. How long it goes, and it goes way past the opening here. So there's a lot of torque on that. That's gonna add stability to the slide room. Super important. The last thing you want to happen is for a slide room uh, to get thrown out of sync because the wall is not true a couple years after you've had your unit and it has sat out in the heat and the cold and everything like that. Also, you can see across the top of the windows, you have uh, two by threes instead of two by twos. Also, the on-center locations for what I'll call the wall studs uh, looks residential. Something that you don't see when you look at a unit, a Jayco or otherwise, is the spacing of those. But I can tell you with certainty that most manufacturers are going to spread the on-center distances on these a lot more than Jayco. You know what that means? These are a few pounds more than their competition. We talk about that often. There's a good reason. There's more stock that goes into a Jayco. Weighs a few more pounds, and of course it costs a few more bucks. Lasts a whole lot longer because of it. Okay, now we're up in the mezzanine level where we're putting the roof structures on these units. Uh, right behind me, you can see all these wire spools down here. They're assembling all the various wiring components to go into the unit which is of course much of it gonna go through the roof structure. And behind me are where we're building the Magnum Truss roof system. Now we talk about that a lot. What does that actually mean, Magnum Truss roof system? It means a few things. I'll point out what makes Jayco different and point out why Jayco can have a 4,500 pound weight rating on the roof, a fully walkable roof, which is not always the case with uh, RVs that you see out there in the wild, but they are with Jayco, so let me show you. All right, here's a stack of completed trusses that are ready to go into a unit. I'll back up here and do a close-up of uh, one that's conveniently placed here. A couple things I'll point out. You got these little nailing plates that are along here. They're multiple nailing plates and they're on both sides. A lot of manufacturers will put a nailing plate on just one side. Something else to point out, notice that it does not protrude into this area, which is where a lot of your wiring is gonna go. You don't want a piece of wire rubbing up against a nailing plate. So multiple nailing plates all along there. Again, the on-center locations of these are much closer than the competition. Let's look over here. There's a roof structure being built uh, right before our eyes. So what's this mean? Again, you can walk on this roof. It also allows Jayco to put more fiberglass bat 
insulation in the roof structure than they would otherwise. Now we can start to see uh, the roof structure take shape and we can see the ducting that's been placed in this already. You know, Jayco didn't just, you know, throw up an air conditioner up there and run some ducts. They hired an HVAC company uh, to design systems specifically for these units. And I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to point this out later, so I'll point it out right now. But each one of these ducts um, is made out of a foam material. Uh, I'll get as close as I can, but it's actually foam which adds insulating qualities. That means it's not going to uh, sweat and create condensation inside uh, that raceway and ultimately in your coach. It's insulated. Notice too there's no right angle turns. They're radius turns. Puts less resistance on the fan motor. So pretty cool stuff. I pr appreciate that having had a number of RVs myself where there was a lot of condensation that formed in the AC lines on the roof with this insulated force flow channel that we're looking at. That's really minimized here. Now what we're looking at here is the Mesa metal that's eventually going to go on the side of a unit. Can't really tell from looking but I'll let you look. So this is 0.024 thickness, and why does that matter? Uh, because just about everybody else is using 0.019 thickness. It's thicker, more rigid, a tad bit heavier. Something else worth pointing out is there's more crimps in this than you'll see in the competition. And again, you ask why does that matter? It looks a little bit different, but it adds more rigidity to, uh, to the aluminum. Uh, and once more, I'll add that when you look at the dark metal too, that's even thicker yet because that's subjected to more temperature swings when the sun hits it. Also, we're not as wide. We don't have as wide of pieces as you'll see in the competition. The wider piece that you get and you put on here, the more it's going to be able to move in and out. These are narrower pieces. It adds for a more sturdy wall structure. Think of it as the siding that goes on your house and a lot of, I get this question a lot, so what's better? Is aluminum better? Is fiberglass better? They both have their redeeming qualities, but whatever you choose, you want it to be the best quality product in that family. Uh, again, this is something that you just wouldn't think about looking at a unit sitting on the lot until you go and uh, lean into it, push into it a little bit and see how much it gives. Do that on a Jayco and then go to the other brand sitting next to it. See what you see. I bet it gives a little bit more on the other guy. Now we're starting to look like a travel trailer. We've got the walls assembled, uh, ready to put the roof structure on. This gives you a good shot of that LVL header that goes across the top and how important that is, how important it is to the slide room that's eventually going to go in that. You can see our, our main uh, com interior components are already placed, the wiring is pulled, and we're really starting to take shape and look like an actual travel trailer. Next step in the line, we're going to put insulation in these walls. Now they're just starting to put insulation in this unit, uh, obviously not complete yet. They're going to spray some adhesive in each of these cavities and then place precision cut insulation in each one of those cavities. Now that's important to have that adhesive in there because you don't want this insulation sliding down during travel. Again, as we talk about, you're going through earthquake level vibrations. You want that insulation to stay put and it does in this construction method. Now, when we're talking about the lightweights, the J Feathers and the White Hawks, uh, you've got precision cut foam core, uh, foam insulation in there. We've got fiberglass bat insulation in the J Flight line. Now, it's really interesting in this process to see how these things are literally moved down the line. They run on a track. So these things can actually be pushed from side to side as they go down the line. So this unit is going to run along this track down to this next stage where 
the aluminum siding is placed on it. And again, now we're really starting to look like a travel trailer. Uh, this enables them to push it from one end all the way to the other. So we start out with a bare frame, end up with a completed travel trailer when we get to the other side. And there's precision checks, quality control checks all along the line. Now I'm talking about full PDI here at Jayco in a separate video but there's multiple quality checks that go along the line before it can progress through the line. Um, this thing's got a little sheet clipboard that follows it all the way through the line to make sure that there's quality checks done in transit as it works its way through the line. All right, now it's time to put some slide out rooms in. We've got a couple slides sitting here. It gives me a chance to point out a couple things. Let me just pan around here. These things are put together so that the whole assembly can be slid into the unit. Now a lot of people will come on the lot and rightfully look at a slide and say, whoops, that thing's not square. It, it, it looks like it's a little bit wider at the bottom than the top. And to that I would say, good observation. You know, at first glance it's like, whoops, somebody wasn't measuring right at the factory. It's actually 5 eighths of an inch wider at the bottom. Well, what does that do? It allows the top to make a tighter contact to the outside unit when it comes in and vice versa when it's pushed, pushed out. Um, also, there's a little bit of a decline in the top, so obviously to shed water um, from the edge of the coach to the outside of the coach, and that's in there by design. And when you walk along the lot and all the slides are fully protruded, you look at it and it's like, whoops. Uh, but it's an intentional whoops, an, an intentional design factor, I should say, uh, that's to your benefit. So never fear. And I, I've noticed that before, and I thought, man, it just it looks a little odd, but it's supposed to be that way. Here's a little bit, uh, here's a lightweight slide uh, that we have, see, taking shape. The roofing material is already on it. Um, a few more steps along the way, and this guy will be ready to be placed in the side of the unit. The Schwintech slides are already installed in this. And I'll add that Schwintech slides are used in the lightweight slides, um, usually where there's not a big furniture component like a refrigerator or something like that. Schwintech uh, slides have proven uh, effective and reliable when used properly. Now, a lot of the same components go into units made by different manufacturers. Uh, including Schwintech slides. The key is how they're installed and how they're used. So you'll see many of the same components in units as you shop around. The key is how they're put together. So just think about it. When you're shopping homes, you'll see the same brand of appliances and water heaters and commodes and things like that. But how were they installed by the contractor? And that's key. And that's one reason that Jayco can do the warranty that they can do. It's one reason they can do the two-year warranty instead of one year like everybody else. All right, let's talk water heaters. The industry standard for years has been the six gallon gas electric water heater. And it's been a gate great water heater. I got one in my own RV. But the industry is moving toward tankless, on-demand water heaters. And you're gonna see these across the industry. You're gonna see a lot of them in various units. But here's one thing to check, and you might not think of it. What's the BTU rating? Most of the competition, perhaps all of the competition, is gonna be 42,000 BTUs. You're gonna see 60,000 BTUs on every Jayco tankless water heater much more heating capability than the competition. Right next to it, your little control panel that you'll see on the inside of the coach. It's gonna look a bit, little bit different than what you're used to seeing. Also, there's gonna be a reservoir in the back, a little mixing reservoir. So let's say you hit that shower, turn on the hot water, you don't get a jolt quite as much as you would without that mixing reservoir. That's not on every tankless water heater. It is on water heaters that Jayco is installing. So two key things to keep in mind is the BTUs, that mixing reservoir in the back. Again, you look at, oh, it's got a tankless water heater. I'm good, great, let's go to the next one. Just make sure you check on those things. Again, things that you may not think to ask about. Now, right here, um, I'm in a little cabinet door assembly area. We've got a bunch of cabinet doors uh, 
uh, laid out here for installation. And I, you hear me talk about this a lot, and I have an opportunity to show you real easily right here, a little visual aid. Most manufacturers are going to staple the styles together like this, and it's also going to be OSB or particle board or some similar material with tape wrapped around it so that it looks like wood. Take Jayco on the other hand, we're doing pocket screws here. All these styles are pocket screwed in. Which one do you think stronger, this one or this one? If you look at cabinet build in your kitchen, in your bricks and mortar home, it's not going to be stapled. It's going to be like this. So think about this. You're going down the road, subjecting your unit to, again, hurricane force winds, earthquake level vibrations. This is going to stick together a lot more and a lot longer than this will. A question I often get when folks come onto our lot is, how strong is that shower? I'm a big guy. I don't want to get in there and have that thing break. And it's an excellent question. Most manufacturers are not going to reinforce the shower base with anything. And you get in there, stand and just sort of bounce up and down and it feels like it's going to fall through the floor. And it, and it very well may. Well, what's bad about that? Every time you step in that shower, you're pushing up and down the plumbing connections, the P-trap connection that goes right through that notch. In Jayco's case, it's reinforced with plywood on the underside of the shower. Um, and we had a guy come through here yesterday that was well north of 300 pounds, jumping up and down on this, and this thing obviously did not break because it's still right here. This is the same kind of structure that goes in the shower uh, on these units on the line. So, you don't have to worry about getting in there, stepping inside that thing, and then after a year or so, you have a leak under there that causes a problem. You know, you don't see those leaks and you won't know that that's leaking until months and maybe a year or more later and after at that point it's already done the damage. So we don't want that thing moving up and down. Again, a little extra step that Jayco takes. Another reason that it weighs a few ounces more, uh, costs a little bit more, but not a lot more. And, and, but you're the end beneficiary of that because it's a stronger product, a stronger shower that's gonna last longer. Now you heard me mention PDI and 100% PDI and quality checks along the line. You know, before these units leave the production line, they have to go through a number of quality checks before they leave. If there are issues spotted, they go to a little place called Sick Bay, and that's where I am right now. Uh, this unit needs to return to, looks like return to line five because it's got something that they need to address. So along the way, if they don't pass inspection or there's something that needs attention that slipped through the cracks, they go back through the line, that issue gets addressed before it goes to the PDI facility where everything is checked again. I need to check and see how many points of inspection there are on the PDI line, the PDI facility. It's a bunch. The units take a while to go through all that. So again, they're checked here and they're checked again once they get over there. Now, do we get units on our lot that still need attention? Yeah, we do sometimes. But with this new initiative where it's 100% PDI, I'm thinking we're going to have way fewer issues. Maybe none, I hope, you know, we can always aspire to that. I will say this too about what I've learned in my time up here uh, attending Jayco Masters. You know, nobody's perfect and Jayco doesn't claim to be perfect. Uh, these are bu built with human hands, but they aspire to be absolutely the best manufacturer and be as perfect as they possibly can be. Um, and there's a culture here that's a little bit intangible I'll talk about later, but uh, sort of a, a, a community, if you will, uh, uh, of strong work ethic. And so when they spot things, where they miss things, you know, they own up to it. Let's go get it fixed, let's get it right, and let's get it out the way it should be. And I can appreciate that. So once units are completed, they get off the line, they go to a transportation yard where they're matched up with a driver and ultimately make their way to the dealership. And we'll do our own PDI check when they get there. But I wanted to just share a few thoughts after having spent some time here at the factory, 
uh, around the workers, the various employees involved, uh, lots of them. This is a huge campus, lots of moving parts. I'm really struck with how many things have to work together, uh, individual components that have to all come together to make uh, an RV that ultimately ends up on our lot. Um, I'm struck with the culture here at Jayco, how strong it is. It's a real sense of family. It's a real sense of you know, actually their motto, generations of family fun. So culture, I was thinking about this yesterday, and culture doesn't just happen overnight. You don't snap your fingers and say, we have good culture. It takes years and years and years, generation actually, in order to establish that culture. Um, and it traces all the way back to the Bontragers, Lloyd Bontrager ultimately uh, starting this company. Uh, the workers here are busy. You know, I've been to lots of factory tours here in Northern Indiana and many of them, you know, the guys are running around so fast, it's a wonder they don't just crash into each other. And, and, uh, and to be certain, the workers here are working quickly, but very deliberately. Everybody is working together. It's like this tightly wound choreographed machine that, that everybody's working together. And it's a real supportive kind of a, a atmosphere too. I was struck with how polite the employees are, how everybody worked together. And I heard it over and over and over from all kinds of workers, how supportive Jayco is uh, of them and of the company in, in, in general. So I really appreciate that. Um, if you get a chance to come do a factory tour, uh, it's well worth it, uh, but I know most people can't do that. And so hopefully this will give you a little peek behind the curtain, as I say, to kind of get a sense of what goes into building one of these. We'll do more of these as we can in the future, try to do one uh, on some of the other lines as well. But I hope you've enjoyed this. And as always, I appreciate you joining me.